Hello and welcome back to another CodePro tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to try to explain pointers as simply as possible in C and C++. So I know this is a confusing topic for most beginner programmers, but hopefully I can make it a little more clear and a little less confusing. If you're interested in learning a new skill in learning iOS development, I have a course available on Skillshare and on Udemy that's great for beginners with over three hours of video tutorial content that will teach you the fundamental skills of iOS application development. If you sign up at my links down below in the description, you'll get the Udemy course for 50% off, or if you use the Skillshare link, you'll get two months of Skillshare premium for free. So I highly suggest you check it out if you're interested, and I do plan on putting up additional programming content on those sites that are not related to iOS in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. So pointers can be somewhat of a confusing topic for uh, beginner programmers, and uh, it's easy to get tripped up with the whole concept of memory addresses and reassigning values and dereferencing and all of those buzzwords. But what I'll try to do is break this down into a few simple examples and try to share some tips that might make it easier for you to mentally visualize what's going on uh, with pointers. So first, let's start by defining what a pointer is. And it's really just basically a variable that holds a memory address where a value lives. Um, that's really all you have to think about for right now. And let's kind of jump into some basic examples so you can see this in action. And then I think it'll probably make more sense once you practice this and just debug it for yourself until you get that aha moment. Also for my environment, I'm running this in Xcode in a um, C++ project, but you can run this on any um, C++ compiler. So this is gonna be pretty basic and it'll work uh, across platform, Mac, Windows, and Linux. So let's start off with our first example. So um, example one. So we're gonna declare uh, an integer and we're just gonna call it int number one and we're gonna assign it the value of five. So very basic, uh, nothing going on here that's too crazy. And right below we're gonna declare int pointer number two. And so when we declare this, we're basically saying this is a pointer data type that is going to point to a particular memory address where a value lives and it is an integer type. Um, and this asterisk is how we denote the pointer syntax. Um, and so right now, uh, this isn't doing anything. We've declared a pointer, we've declared an integer, but we have not pointed anything yet. So what happens is when we want to change where our pointer points to, we can say that our pointer number two is going to point to the address, the memory address of value or number one by doing this. And so at this point in time, a relationship has been set up where the, val the memory address where this points to points to number one. And so I can illustrate that even more by printing out to the console what's going on here. So if we do this, if we see out or print the address of number one, like so, and we then do the same thing for printing out just number two, we're gonna notice something when we run this. So let's go ahead and run this really quick and see what we're getting back. So right away we're getting some hex memory address printed out in the console and we go over number two by printing out our pointer and we can see that we're actually printing out the exact same memory address. This means that our pointer is pointing to the location in memory of number one. So how do we dereference uh, number two, or basically get the value of whatever it's pointing at? And the way we can do that is like this. So we can dereference our pointer by printing, or by dereferencing it like this, which basically you can just think of getting the value of whatever it's pointing to, like so. Um, and so if we run this again, we can see that we're getting a different memory address because each time we rerun this program, the operating system will reassign a new memory address to our program for these variables. And we can see that they're pointing to the same locations. And then we print out the actual value of number two, the dereferenced value is five. So 
that right there is how we can basically do a assignment and a dereferencing uh, of a pointer. So the magic happens right here, where uh, number two, the pointer, uh, the address of it will now uh, point to uh, the address of number one. But what happens if we try to do some dereferencing before we actually point number two to the address of number one? So let's first of all print out our address of number one, just to see what it is before we do anything. Then we'll do the same thing for number two, our pointer, before we've made any assignment. And then finally, we'll dereference it or try to get any value we think might be at number two, even though we have yet to do the assignment. So let's just throw a breakpoint here and run through this line by line and just see what we're getting. And we can see I'm already getting a warning here uh, saying that number two is uninitialized, the, the pointer. So <clears throat> we see that we're getting a memory address down here in the console for number one. We also see that we're getting a different memory address for the pointer number two because it's not pointing yet. And then we try to dereference the pointer and we get some negative garbage value back. And, and that's just something that the operating system is stuffing into that variable because it doesn't know what value should go there. It, it's completely uninitialized. Then we do the initialization. We then go through the same logic again. And so we see our address for number one. We see our address for our pointer is pointing to number one. We dereference our pointer, the value of five. One other point I'd like to mention is this is generally uh, risky because you're not guaranteed to always have a value here if you uh, try to dereference the pointer before it's been uh, assigned. So this could actually crash your app or program. So what generally you'd want to do is initialize it to a null value first. And what you then want to do is check. So if number two, pointer two does not equal null, then try to do something. And in this case, then we could try to dereference it. So what's going to happen if we run this example just for safety is now that I've assigned it to the value of null, you can see that when we print out the memory address, it's the hex 0x0, not some random address because it's assigned null. And because it is a null, we won't dereference it, which could potentially crash our program. All right, so let's move on to example two. So example two, and uh, we'll just print out a little bit of space in our console here so we can see everything. OK, uh, so we're going to use this uh, example again, but with strings and in kind of a slightly different scenario. So uh, let's say we have a string. And we'll just call this the YouTube God. And his channel is PewDiePie. And then we have my YouTube channel. Which is CodePro. And you should subscribe. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Then we have a pointer. And we'll call this one the channel hijacker pointer. And you can see that it's a string. Um, and it hasn't been initialized to anything just of yet. So if we are to print out my channel name, located at address And if we do the same thing here for PewDiePie's channel, located at address, Like so. And right then here, so what we'll do is right below it, 
we're going to say that the channel hijacker pointer is going to equal or be assigned to the address of YouTube God or PewDiePie. And then we're going to say my YouTube channel dereferences the value located or that's being pointed at uh, by the channel hijacker, like this. And so if you can guess what's going to happen, what we'll do here is print out again this line up top. And let's go ahead and run this example for example two and see what we get. So as I step through my print statements here, I can see that my channel has a memory address, and I can see that PewDiePie's channel has a different memory address. You can see here in the console that these hex memory addresses are not the same. And at this point, we go ahead and assign channel hijacker to point to um, PewDiePie's channel. And then I steal his channel by dereferencing the pointer. And then I print out, again, my channel information one more time. And we can see that my channel name has now changed to PewDiePie by dereferencing the pointer. But you can see that my memory address has not changed. It's still the same. And I only simply reassigned the dereferenced value to my channel here. And you can see that the address before we did the assignment and after the assignment, the memory address for my channel remains unchanged. So let's look at our third and final example here. So what we'll do is create a string. I'll call it my computer, which is assigned the value of iMac. I'll then create a uh, computer or my wish list pointer equals the or points to the address of my computer. And if I go ahead and dereference my wishlist pointer, it'll print out iMac. So nothing's changed really just yet, but I'm going to do some shenanigans here and change the value to iMac Pro 13 bazillion dollar edition. And then I'm going to print out my computer and let's see what happens. So let's go through this line by line here and um, examine the results. So we start off with the assignment and we print uh, the value iMac here in the console. And we then go ahead and change the dereferenced value to this super expensive iMac Pro. And then we finally print out the value of my computer, which was originally iMac. And now my computer has just changed to a super expensive iMac Pro, which is awesome. Um, and the reason for that is because you have to remember that this pointer is pointing to the memory address where my computer lives. And by changing the dereferenced value to this, we have just changed the value at this memory address from iMac to this expensive iMac Pro. And so this is where you can kind of stumble with pointers and you have to be very, very careful if you're dealing with raw pointers in, in like a real work environment uh, because stuff like this can cause all kinds of debugging nightmares. So pointers aren't that bad once you understand the underlying mechanics of what is going on. Now, in these examples, we did not initialize any new memory to the heap or delete dynamically allocated memory, nor did we pass pointers to through functions or pass by reference through functions. So that's something we can cover in later tutorials. But uh, a, a good thing to take away is if you get stuck with pointers, um, a really good strategy for debugging them is a very much like this, trying to create a scenario, see if something points to the same memory address, and then dereferencing the values there um, so that you can make heads or tails of what is going on with your pointers, and then you can move on from there. And that wraps up this tutorial. I hope you found this helpful and it cleared up some of the confusion uh, with pointers and gave you some debugging strategies that you can use uh, when you get stuck on problems. So if you like this tutorial, let me know. 
go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Make sure to follow CodePro on Facebook, on Twitter, on Skillshare and Udemy. And let me know in the comment section down below what tutorial you would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.